If you're looking to buy new curling equipment, don't settle for cheap imitations. Hardline came onto the scene seven years ago and is now at the forefront of high-performance and recreational curling equipment. Hardline's ice pad is the best choice when it comes to brush heads, which is why top-ranked pros play with it, including world champions Team Gushu, as well as U.S. men's and women's national champions Team Schuster and Team Sinclair. Whether you're looking for brooms, the Pro Slide Delivery Aid designed by Reed Carruthers, or shoes and apparel, take a look at Hardline and see why they are the number one choice for curling equipment. Show this sponsor your support by going to www.tesn.us and clicking on Hardline's Ice Pad logo. Curling fans, as America's best curling teams prepare to compete on the world stage, you've come to the one place with everything you need involving USA Curling. It's the Extra Extra In podcast with Price Atkinson. Get ready for everything that you need to know. News, interviews, points of view, anything involving Team USA forming and the 2018 Winter Olympics in South Korea for Team USA Curling is found here. It's the Extra Extra In podcast with Price Atkinson and the 12th In Sports Network crew powered by Isagenics. All right, welcome into the Extra Extra In podcast with the 12th In Sports Network, powered by Isa Jennings, Price Atkinson, and joined not by Joe Calabrese this week, but going to pull double duty on this episode of the Extra Extra In. Jessica Schultz, two-time Olympian, and I feel two-time Olympian is, how does that still feel? How does that feel being still called two-time Olympian? I mean, do you still get chills, or is it kind of like, okay, I'm, I'm over it? I mean, how does that still feel, Jess? No, it still feels pretty amazing. It's it's definitely a special feeling, and uh, it's one I will never get over. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't think so. So Jessica Schultz is like as I just mentioned. Jessica Schultz is going to do some double duty here on episode eight of the Extra Extra and podcast. She's going to kind of do some co-hosting with me here, and we're going to get through this first segment as we have got a guest interview in the next segment. We'll talk with Nina Roth and Eileen Geving coming off a big weekend in the Canada Inns Women's Classic in Manitoba that they took home the championship that they went up there and won. So we'll talk about that uh, here in a little bit. But Jessica Schultz is also going to – we're going to explore in our roundtable a couple topics. We're going to talk about Nina Roth and their fifth-place finish at Worlds last year. But also, I think more importantly maybe as it relates to clubs around the country, Jess, you know, just the the way that clubs can maximize this Olympic year – uh, with events, watch parties, learn to curls, just an array of activities to try and help g- grow their local clubs. Right, yeah. So for clubs that are interested in growing their membership, now is the best opportunity to jump on board with the Olympic movement and all the media it's receiving. So that we have a lot of ideas coming up uh, to discuss on how clubs can go about utilizing that to the best that they can. Yeah, so we're going to get into that, Jessica Schultz and I, episode 8 of the Extra Extra In podcast with the 12th Instant Sports Network, powered by Isagenics. Again, just thank you so much to everybody joining us every single week. If this is your first time, thank you so much. You can subscribe and listen on the iTunes app, uh, the Apple Podcast app on your smartphone. Just pull up the Apple Podcast app and search the extra extra end it is that easy to do it is not hard stitcher google play an array of ways you can listen to this podcast every single week a new episode out every thursday morning and without a doubt you can go to tesn.us forward slash podcast tesn.us forward slash podcast you can listen to every episode right there you can register for our contests and giveaways just all kinds of really cool stuff that we've got uh, it's prizes each week on the Extra Extra and podcast. So before we get out of the gate, Jess, you know, big, really a big weekend this weekend, especially on the women's side. And, you know, we're going to get into some of this here in the round table, but just to touch on it, just on the surface level, just a big win for Nina Roth over Anna Hasselberg, five to four in the, in the title game of the Canadiens women's classic in Manitoba. Corey Christensen, she makes the playoffs. And then Jamie Sinclair, I know they had a little bit of a rough go. They won their first game, and it was a little bit of an up-and-down weekend, but really a solid showing, and certainly no doubt about it with Nina Roth winning that championship up there in Manitoba. 
Definitely. That was a huge win for them and a fantastic game. It sounds like I got to watch part of it uh, until we had to go out and play our league game, but um, like she's rolling. She's hot right now. She's doing great against these awesome teams. Um, she played in the finals against Holman uh, just a couple of weeks ago and um, came in second there. So they're definitely setting themselves on a good track for the trials here. Yeah, no doubt about it. We'll get into that here in just a little bit on the round table. But, you know, Corey Christensen, they get to the playoffs. They get knocked out by Kelsey Rock who uh, was uh, eliminated by Nina Roth there in the playoffs. But Jamie Sinclair, they uh, they failed to make the playoffs there. But the Arena Challenge in Quebec, I know Craig Brown and Heater McCormick, those guys were playing there. Uh, Craig Brown's team, you know, again, kind of an up-and-down weekend. But Heater McCormick and those guys, they kind of take it to the bitter end, just barely missing out on the playoffs. They fall to Peter DeCruz and the Swiss guys 3-2 to two, uh, in a game that they it was tied in that extra end. They didn't have hammer. DeCruz gets out that single, and that was all she wrote. But just a, a really solid performance again by Heater McCormick and those guys in Quebec. I don't think John Schuster was anywhere because obviously they're playing in the second Grand Slam right now, the Masters there in Lloyd Minster going on right now as we also have uh, – playing John I mentioned John Schuster we also have Jamie Sinclair in the in the Masters there the second grand slam of the season Jess but you know a, a, all these teams have had just an element of success and I say all these teams all of our trials teams the five on the men's side and really the three on the women's side have all really had elements of strong success this fall is we're just I mean it's crazy we're mere weeks away now Jess from the Olympic trials in Omaha no. Right, only what three weeks away? It's coming I, up quick. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I literally booked my flight this morning to Omaha, and I say, are, are, "Is it? Re- it's here." I mean, it is here now. We will be at Baxter Arena. Have you booked your flight yet? Do you still? Do you know what you're doing yet? I hope you're going to join us, Jess. Please tell me you're going to be there. Well, I'm definitely going to be there. We're um, a few of us are driving up on Wednesday, so we'll miss the first part of the round robin, but we'll be showing up just in time to see who's going to come out victorious. All right, you made my you made my night by telling me that. So, <laughs> yeah. all right, uh, we got a whole lot to get into here. It's Jessica Schultz and I. We're gonna you know handle our roundtable this week. We're gonna get into uh, Nina Roth and then what local clubs can do you know, with this Olympic wave and the obviously the upcoming 2008 Winter Olympics coming up in South Korea. How you can grow your clubs, different events, just ways to maximize this exposure. But Jess uh, is the I've got the World Series on. I was kind of curious, you know. There's a lot going on in the sports world. I was kind of jealous the other day when I saw a photo of you. Were you at the Vi- at the, at the Viking game just a couple weeks ago? <laughs> because I saw the Packers and Vikings. Obviously, it's a bitter rivalry. And I asked John Schuster, dude, or which way do you go? You Packer or Viking? He's like, Viking, man, all the way. I don't know with you guys because in Minnesota, the Wisconsin, everybody, you're from Alaska originally, but have you embraced the Minnesota teams and are you fully on board with the Vikings and the Twins and you know what's going on there in the pro sports scene in Minnesota? Uh, definitely. I'm Minnesota all the way. Growing up in Alaska, you kind of had to, you got to pick whoever you wanted to. And being my family's mostly Packer fans, uh, they kind of frowned upon it when I moved to Minnesota and um, quickly adopted the teams. So that's, I was, I was there. I was at the Vikings Detroit game. It wasn't the best game that we've played all year, but you know, it's always a great experience and the stadium was alive you know, noises, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I see that stadium, Richie Ruin, and uh, his mm-hmm. season tickets. I'm like, dude, I just got to come out. You got to invite me to one of these games with those season tickets you got. But that or that stadium, that new Viking stadium, just absolutely looks beautiful. But speaking of beautiful, you've got a brand new Facebook page out. Tell our listeners here on the Extraction Podcast about your new Facebook page how they can follow you right there to go like that new Facebook page. And you also got a pretty cool new, uh, I don't want to say endeavor, but something new that you've also started on social media as well. Yeah. So just this past week, I've decided to start a Facebook page. It's under my name, Jessica K. Schultz. And it's really just to kind of help promote the sports, um, promote what I love about it, and as well as kind of start to merge my health career 
and my curling career into one. So there'll be, I've been posting stuff every day and, and coming up, I'm going to start posting how we can help improve our bodies while curling and um, address certain ailments that we might get as curlers. So just stay tuned. If you, if you're interested, it'd be cool. Check it out. Um, I love getting feedback on it. So I'm definitely open to all the comments you have. And as well, I just started a blog. So first um, the introduction came out today and uh, hopefully I can keep up with it. And uh, we'll be, we'll be interviewing some of the trials teams here shortly and see where I can go with it. I really, cool stuff jess i've already bookmarked your blog then that's jessica k schultz dot wordpress dot com that's where you can j- check out jess and her blog and also she mentioned her new facebook page at jessica k schultz on facebook at jessica jessica k schultz give her a like there on her new facebook page you won't regret it and certainly without a doubt you can follow jessica on on twitter at jess underscore curls you can follow me at Bryce Atkinson, certainly the 12th and Sports Network on Facebook and Twitter. Connect with us in an array of ways. But let's go ahead and get out of here, Jess. When we come back, Nina Roth, Eileen Geving, as they took home the Canada Inns Women's Classic this weekend in Manitoba. Conversation with them coming up, and we'll be back with our roundtable on the Extra Extra and Podcast, powered by Isagenics. Broomskins.ca designs and produces custom curling broom handle wraps for club curlers, teams, curling team sponsors, and curling clubs. Personalize your broom and display your team colors and sponsors. The design is limited only by your imagination. This week, we are giving you the chance to win four custom broomskins. You can design them for your entire team. To enter, go to our website at www tesn.us forward slash podcast and use it the widget on the upper right hand corner of the page thanks to broomskins for the gift only to our extra extra in listeners Welcome back into the Extra Extra In podcast. I'm Price Atkinson here. We're going to talk with Team Nina Roth as Nina Roth and Eileen Geving are joining us. How are we doing today, ladies? Very doing well. Great. Well, as we sit here in mid-October getting ready for the trials, which is just around the corner, I'm sure the excitement is bubbling with you all. What is it like as you get ready to go on really, I guess, not the biggest stage quite yet, hopefully the biggest stage as it's concerned, but at least here in the United States, the biggest with the Olympic trials. It's just really exciting. We're uh, ready to go. Uh, We've been waiting for this uh, trials for what feels like a very long time right now. Uh, We've been working very, very hard, so uh, it'll be be nice to put on a show in a Mm -hmm. few weeks. Yeah, absolutely. Eileen? Yeah, I completely agree. It's just been... A lot of really hard work and so it's exciting to kind of have that competition to really see where we're at and what we can do you know coming out off last season I mean I know it certainly at nationals just came up a little bit short but you get to go to the worlds and you guys finish fifth at the world championship sure you wanted to make the podium but you finished fifth um you know talk about coming off worlds and getting ready just to quickly turn the page through the summer because I know it was very very short for you guys as it was everybody that's going to be in Omaha in a couple weeks Mm mm-hmm uh, Worlds was an awesome experience for us to get to play against that caliber team mm-hmm. and a bunch of the teams that uh, will be at the Olympics as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so a good test for us. It definitely learned a lot about ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, it feels like we kind of just came home, had like a week or two, and then had to hit the gym really, really hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I think Worlds was an incredible tournament for us. And we even, you know, we looked back and we kind of watched back some of our games from earlier in the season. And it's, cool to see how much we had grown at Worlds and how yeah. proud we were of some of the things that we were doing, the way we were communicating, and trying to take that and even build on it even more mm-hmm. moving into the season. Yes, yeah, so we're talking with Nina Roth and Eileen Geving here from Team Roth, and certainly your team comprised of, of you two, but also Tabitha Peterson and Becca Hamilton. And, you know, the high-performance program, what's this been like in, you know, since you guys entered the high-performance program? What have been some of the maybe surprises you've had, some of maybe the unexpected challenges maybe of being in the high-performance program? It's surprising how much it even though you're competing against everyone and Mm -hmm. you it still feels like a family like you're training together you're all working towards the same goal and everybody 
here has put in so much time and so much effort that it's it's really cool to have that community and kind of people that understand because not a lot of people understand all the work that we have done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's great, especially when we go to the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs. That's when we really feel like a big family because we're we're yeah. in the gym together, sweating it out together, you know, doing the incline together, everything. Yeah. Just you get to really see how everyone else is working, and we're all working together to raise the level of USA curling. So yeah, it, it, seeing photos and just talking to some of the other athletes, it seemed like that was really an awesome experience to be in Colorado Springs. You know, not just maybe certainly the team by you guys have is you know the four of you but also you know the other high performance athletes as you're training and really doing this journey together because in a lot of ways it is together mm-hmm. all right um you know nina you played with some of the you know leading u.s women's curlers over the years and as you've moved up in the sport what have you been what have you been able to take away from you know some of the previous skips that have helped you achieve some of the success that you've had so far to this point oh wow Um, Well, there are so many ladies that I've learned from and had the opportunity to play with, and it's hard to pinpoint one thing. I've learned so much, Um, (laughs) but just... You can go with a few if you got some. Go with a few. If you got some, if you only have one, that's fine. Um, (laughs) Just to to keep pushing, um, to be proud to be playing for the U.S., um, and just to work hard. I mean, their, mm-hmm. their work, work ethic was amazing. Yeah. Um, as a junior, I thought I was busting my butt, but then to get to play with them, it was just yeah. remarkable to see what they were doing. And, you know, they were doing it without being in the high performance program and without, um, having, you know, the funding and the mm-hmm. resources that we have. And, um, you know, they were still busting in the gym and going to all these tournaments and doing well yeah. before the program was even here. So, it's it's great and it's great to still get to talk to those ladies and and learn from them and watch some of their videos and yeah and still continue that it's, it, they definitely left a legacy for us any one that you know that you played with that just had really maybe say the biggest impact on you that is not in the sport any one in particular that might come to mind immediately uh definitely <clears throat> erica brown okay um i i played her dad was my coach my first coach and i practiced a bunch with her in madison yep. and um then had the opportunity to play with her and played uh-huh. at my first women's worlds with her so Definitely, Erica Brown. All right, Eileen, you played all over, you know, as a curler. You skipped your own team at, you know, several nationals and, you know, made the playoffs of, what, 05 and, you know, several nationals after that. You you played in a lot of different, almost everywhere. I think a lot of you guys have played probably everywhere at some point in your careers. But, you know, what do you bring to this team? I mean, having had experience up and down in the lineup and, you know, found the home where you have right now. I think I can just kind of – meld into wherever I need to be having played a million different positions Mm -hmm. and many different people you just kind of like in in this case now like I've kind of just found my role into second and where Mm -hmm. I stand and I'm kind of giving as needed and that's just what I do. <laughs> All right, we continue with Nina Roth and Eileen Geving here on the Extra Extra End podcast. And how have, how have the foursome of you guys, how have y'all come together, you know, over the last, you know, full year in this, what I believe your second full seat, what will be your second full season together? How do you guys come together, you know, as a team? Because I know you've become really like family. Yeah, I think we we started with a, a great mutual respect for each other. Um, we knew the each of us as individuals had worked so hard, mm-hmm. and we'd played against each other in juniors and in women's, uh, with and against each other. Yeah. Um, so to be able to come together uh, was just really exciting. So um, it, it was a good kickoff to our, our season last year. Mm-hmm. We were all happy to be together it, it, does it feel i mean is it kind of year two eileen is it you come together is it does it feel a little bit different than it did say yeah. last year at this time when you were just starting out together it's funny because you know we meet with sports psych here and there and yeah. for us it, we've had a very easy relationship together where mm-hmm. things just kind of you know we know we all have the same plan we know nobody's ever trying to miss we know nobody you know like we have the same goals we're all on the same page and we're all pretty yeah. easy with each other and being respectful of each other and so it's just been just going with the flow and everything seems to be flowing correctly yeah. <laughs> talk about becca hamilton because your lead i mean she's 
an intense teammate. You know, I, I love to watch her on the broom. I mean, she. I love watching her just absolutely boss it out there. What is she? How does she set the tone? You know, for this team. She's she's a fierce force. Uh, I love having her on my team. She's yeah. so supportive in in her intensity, which which is key. Um, you know, and she brings the humor. And and for me personally, she knows when she can sense when I'm feeling a little stressed, and then she'll come up and like do something silly and um, helps me out a lot. So. I mean, because she seems. In, I mean, she's intense. She's got that look, but then and then you see her smile. It's like, hold yeah. on, where did that come? I mean, she, you know, mm-hmm. she can totally lighten it up in the snap of a finger. It seems yeah. Like. yeah, yeah, it just flips right away. That's. That's what she does. That's how she is, and it's awesome to have her there exactly for those reasons. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, and you know, without you know, we have to talk about Tabitha because obviously one of your other teammates. Talk about what she brings to this team because they're you know on a on a foursome like this, there are different personalities. What does she bring with mm-hmm. her personality to Team Roth? With Tabitha, um, she's she's fierce too. Yeah. She's uh, um, and she's really smart, uh-huh. and she'll always just keep us on a on a steady path it's yeah. it's really good i like working with her in the back end <laughs> mm-hmm. um you know we have our our light moments too which is good mm-hmm. so uh talking with nina roth and eileen Geving here on the extra extra in podcast I, i'm curious nina how you do it because i know talking with uh, terry davis she tells me how much you love your job as a nurse how how do you balance you know being a full-time registered nurse how do you do that with you know you know, skip obviously skipping, but just simply being a part of a high performance team. How do how do you even do it all? It's it's been tricky. I um I found a small <laughs> hospital who really supports um what I'm doing, mm-hmm. and That's and awesome. this year especially um I've gone part time, um so it'll be a little easier to juggle things. But I I really have a strong passion for nursing. I love what I do. I love taking care of my patients. So it doesn't always feel like work. So it's yeah. nice to to go there and focus on my my second passion, um, take a little break from the stresses of curling, and and just help people out. What, what do you, what do patients say when you tell them that you know I curl, you know, and I'm I'm pretty good. I mean, in your coworkers, what do they what do they say? Like, what kind of reaction do you get? I mean, your coworkers obviously know what you do, but even like patients, how does everybody react? They're they're pretty excited. Yeah. Um. They they like to bring it up a lot. Yeah. I try not to tell people, <laughs> but sometimes my coworkers will peek in a room and be like, "Do you know she's a, a curler? She has a possibility of going to the Olympics. Do you know?" <laughs> and so then that's kind of an embarrassing moment for me. But, oh, it's not embarrassing. They they love it and they're really supportive and want to know about the sport. Yeah. All right, Eileen. I want you know you're so big into the outdoors and I know you love to be outside. And somebody told me that. You heat your home with a wood stove, and you chop your own wood to do it. And I yeah. said, "No, there's no way. There's no way." My really? husband does most of the chopping, but I do all the stacking. So he'll chop and I stack. And a oh, lot of times, half, that's half the work, right? And we, you know, we have ten acres, so he's been kind of cutting down some dead trees, and he'll pull them and um, he'll cut them up with the chainsaw, and then I'm stacking them onto the four wheeler and hauling them back to our woodshed, and then stacking them into the woodshed. <laughs> And bringing all the wood in during the middle of the winter to get fires started in the middle of the night or whatever time that it happens to go out. And, yeah, it's kind of – it can be annoying sometimes, but most of the time it's kind of rewarding. Is, is there a cross-training element with that? I mean, if you're not – I know you're not chopping, chopping the wood, but, I mean, you're going outside. I mean, you're hiking. I mean, you love to be outside and fish. Ro- I mean, there's – I'm sure in the summertime you probably feel, look, I'm not just sitting around, you know, playing video games. I'm not going for a walk in the park. I'm actually out, you know, working and, you know, working on my body, you know, being active. Oh, totally. Yeah, we have some assigned workouts, and some days I have to (laughs) report to Brian that I, you know, maybe paddled 15 miles one day instead of doing my arm workouts, but I think it counts when you paddle that far. (laughs) (laughs) So... (laughs) All right, as we get ready to turn the page, get ready. We've got Olympic trials coming up here in just a few weeks in Omaha. Um, you guys have a new coach this year, Al Hackner. He's coming back to the U.S. Just talk a little bit about you know the opportunity to work with him as he comes back to the U.S. program. I've been around Al a lot and seen him coach other teams, and I know he is one of the smartest curlers out there and really knows the game super super well so having him on board is a huge asset for us you you all were in omaha in late august part of a team usa camp 
and you got to you know hit the ice. You got to obviously you know get the feel of Baxter Arena. What was it like you know in there? You, you know, curling night in America. Y'all weren't a part of it this year. You have been before, but you know what was the ice and what was the atmosphere like in Omaha and specifically Baxter Arena, which you know I know everybody's going to be tuning into the web stream and certainly you know the finals on NBC. It was great. It was, um, you know, the arena is gorgeous. It's mm-hmm. brand new, smells brand new. It's the lighting's amazing. There are even padded seats in the in the stands, which are nice <laughs> when I'm watching games instead yeah. of playing. Um, but really, it's it's an exciting experience getting to play in this arena. So I look forward to. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right, this is. You guys have been on both sides of the coin from, you know, the way the program has been set up, winning nationals, not getting to go to Worlds. You don't win nationals, you get to go to Worlds. I mean, you've been on both sides of this thing. But, I mean, this is a winner take all in Omaha here in a couple, couple weeks. I mean, the winner gets to represent the United States, you know, at the Olympic Games. You know, what would that mean to you all to represent, you know, the stars and bars in South Korea? It would mean everything. I mean, since I started curling when I was 10, I dreamed of going to the Olympics and – really it's it's been my main focus since then so to finally get to call myself an olympian would be just the biggest dream come true absolutely Ali. even just you saying that i got chills <laughs> uh, it's just you put so much work into something and to be at the grand stage i mean it's really can't get any better than that so it would be wonderful so fill in the blank here i, I think i have an idea what the answer will be but we'll just try this fill in the blank what will success be for team roth in omaha in mid-november at the olympic trials when it's over what will success look like winning <laughs> yes <laughs> had a feeling that was coming all right nina roth eileen Gavin, thank you guys so much for taking a few minutes and talking with us here as you guys get ready for a absolutely huge week in just a couple of weeks in omaha can't wait to see you guys at baxter arena it's going to be a lot of fun good luck uh and we'll see you there thank, thank you, you. Have you tried different weight loss programs and are still looking for results? I was too until I found Isagenics, and it didn't take long before I started getting the results that I wanted. Isagenics is a complete 9-day or 30-day weight loss energy performance and health aging program. With over 550,000 customers in 7 countries, Isagenics' science-backed ingredients and products are rigorously tested for safety and will help boost your weight loss efforts by gently cleansing and nourishing your body. Isagenics' cleansing and fat burning system has helped me relieve daily stress and given me even more energy to play with my kids from sun up to sun down. Every day and every week, I'm coming across and meeting a friend of mine that is also an Isagenics customer. My personal Isagenics associate, Sarah Schuster, helped me take control of my health and, most importantly, my life. Sarah walked me through the entire process, answered every question, and most importantly, serves as my personal daily cheerleader. And she can do the same and more for you. Give Sarah a call with the keyword curling at 218-391-1566 and she'll waive your one-year membership fee. Stop making excuses and start taking control. Let Sarah get you started on a healthier life at 218-391-1566. Isagenics did it for me, and it can do it for you. All right, welcome back into the Extra Extra Podcast with the 12th and Sports Network, powered by Isagenics, Price Atkinson, and Jessica Schultz, two-time Olympian, and also... My friend, and we're going to get into an array of topics here, uh, but as we just talked with Nina Roth and Eileen Geving, I caught up with them just a couple weeks ago, and kind of apropos that we've got that interview scheduled for today and this week on the podcast is is they go up to the Canadiens Women's Classic in Manitoba, and really, Jess, you look at the way they did this thing, you know, Nina and company, they get the win. They move up to 10th in the Order of Merit World Curling standings. And the way they did it, you know, you go through Jennifer Jones in the quarters. They knock off 8-3, to three, then take down Kelsey Rock 6-4 to four in the semis. And then, obviously, Anna Hasselberg in an extra end to win it 5-4. to four. That's a pretty solid run through a tournament of some of the elite competition. And clearly, Nina Roth and company, they are one of the elites. 
Right. I mean, that's a fantastic run. It's um, not very often that a U.S. team does that. And I think these girls are playing fantastic and they um, should be on top of the world right now. And it's huge for their confidence going into the next couple of weeks. Yeah, no doubt about it is they go up there and get the win. As I mentioned, they move up to Team Roth moves to 10th in the World Curling Federation standings order of merit. Jamie Sinclair and company who were also in the in the field, they finish uh, did make the playoffs, but they are now 18th in the order of merit. While Corey Christensen, they do make the playoffs. They are now 31st in the order of merit. And as we talk about Nina Roth, you know, one of the questions we had, Jess, you know, for this podcast is, you know, did fifth place at Worlds last year? Did that provide a glimpse of how close this team is to? metal contention and and not just metal contention for the worlds but I guess really you before you start talking about that you got to talk about with the upcoming Olympic trials and we've discussed it here on the podcast that you know Corey Christensen the they've got the youth they're the young team but Mm -hmm. when you look at it on paper it's a Nina Roth Jamie Sinclair battle so you got to take care of business at the trials and get to the Olympic games first right Right, exactly. It's one one shot at a time, really. You can't start thinking too far ahead. Uh, otherwise, you're going to get caught up in that and you might end up not getting there. So you definitely have to think through it and definitely just take it as it comes and not get ahead of yourself. But with your experience at the world level and at the Olympics, you know, what what is a what is a you know, just finishing outside of, of basically the medals at the world championships. What does that do? Does that fuel the team's confidence going into, you know, the following year, which is an Olympic year? I mean, I got to think that that can only help Nina and Becca and Eileen and, and Tab. I mean, that can only provide them with the kind of boost they need heading into this kind of year coming up or that not coming up that we're in. Oh, definitely. I mean, you get a little taste of success at Worlds and then you want more, right? So you you kind of see what those those other teams that are performing the top half, how they're doing, and then what you need to do. you got to really look at your game and what you need to do to improve and get to that level. And it seems like they're on the right track um, right now, but the Olympics is a whole different bear. You know, add in the media aspect of it, and you go from a team of four players or, you know, the team of the coaches and your, and your immediate family to a team of 250 people and the world watching you and you're, you're playing for your country, um, on a huge stage in front of millions of people. So, uh, it's a completely different atmosphere as far as competition goes, but how they did at worlds will definitely help them to succeed going forward. Yeah, and you mentioned succeed, and that's something you did back in, what, 2005, where in your first world championship, you won a silver medal, and then I mean, that, that really throttled you forward as you were part of that Olympic team in 2006, and, you know, how did that, how did that personally help your confidence, Jess? You know, I think going into it, I mean, we didn't definitely didn't expect to win silver and do well at Worlds, but we did, and um, that that helped show that we could compete at a world level and at that uh, that event. And because people were doubting us because of our age and our inexperience, and then unfortunately our training didn't prevail and help us to do that same thing again the following year. And so then after that is when they started looking at changing up the process for the trials. But um, for 2013 Worlds, we did, we uh, lost a home in, um, in order to go on in, into the bronze medal game. So we ended up getting fourth the year before. So we we put our, our plans together and try to do everything we could to put us at the top and then to the top three. So, um, and unfortunately, you know, you get to the Olympics and like I said, it's a completely different, different atmosphere and one that you can't, as much as you try to prepare for it, there's going to be things that are going to catch you off guard, whether you recognize it in the moment or not, but there's going to be things that's going to challenge you. And it's just going to be really important for that team to recognize that they're the team on the ice and it's just those four players, and they're there to play and win. Yeah, as we're talking with Jessica Schultz here on our roundtable again, you can follow her on Twitter at Jess underscore Curls and me at Price Atkinson on Twitter. And is this team, you know, gets ready to move ahead, and we're talking about Team Roth, 
I don't know exactly what their their schedule is moving ahead because you obviously have the second slam going on right now uh, up in Lloyd Minster, but you know, not much more time really after this weekend to to kind of fine tune this thing. So as they come off that win, I mean, do you know what their what their schedule is moving forward? I'm I'm guessing you don't, but is this kind of one where you take that win? If if it were you, do you take the win? Do you just kind of go back and start fine tuning things because we're going to be obviously in Omaha in just a matter of weeks or, or do you think they'll probably play in one, maybe two more tournaments? I'd imagine they would probably have one more coming up, but you don't want to be too burnt out going into the yeah. trials. So it kind of, I'm, and I'm sure they have a pretty good plan in place to help with that. And they're obviously planning their peak time right when they need to be here at, for the trials anyways. So um, coming off of this win, that's a huge confidence booster and pretty much you can just carry that in. I don't think they need to be tweaking or changing their deliveries or anything like that. Maybe just working on some small things that they might have picked up that needs a little bit of improvement but these girls are doing great yeah I no doubt about it they're just playing really really well right now all right Mm -hmm. let's go ahead and pivot Jess because this is an Olympic year right I mean this is clearly we're getting ready for February 2018 South Korea Uh, this is you've been a part of the marbles all the marbles that is twice and (laughs) you know when you look back here call me crazy but I got into the sport in 2006, Jess, when I was watching you guys in Torino. That's when I got bitten by the bug. I mean, I I could not (laughs) turn it off. I literally, I felt like I knew you guys watching every single throw of that Olympics by the time it was over. (laughs) And when that wave that went through starting in 2006, it feels like every single winter Olympics, when it comes to curling, that wave has, that it, it hasn't crested so quickly. That wave has just kind of continued on a little bit further through the four-year cycle each year. Am I wrong? No, you're correct. It's it's amazing the growth um, that has come out of the Olympics for curling in the U.S. And I think the clubs just need to really reach out and plan this year to help promote that and how to, one, not only bring people into the get into the doors, you know, into try curling. Cause you're going to get a lot of people that just want to try it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's going to be another thing to keep them coming back. So it's just kind of reaching out to, um, corporate, um, corporations, uh, to local, you know, establishments and just getting people in the door and then finding ways to really retain them as members. Yeah. And, and USA curling is just, they've done a really, really good job with their preparing for the Olympic winter games, 2018 e-news letters if you're not a member of usa curling you should sign up because some really good helpful tips and ideas and and just ways for all local clubs to really capitalize on this jess because i mean this is really the time and opportunity with curling you know showing up and i was an olympic sport athlete too i mean my sport of swimming you know, as a college swimmer, we were, I mean, we got our shot, what, once a year, right? I mean, it's the same thing in the Olympics. I mean, World Championship shows up, and I think Michael Phelps added a little bit to our sport, you know, in between the, the four-year cycles. But, I mean, this is really the one time you get on that, that big stage, so you got to take advantage of it. So when it comes to local clubs, you know, the ways that you can take advantage of it, I mean, learn to curls are, are probably the biggest thing, whether it's in advance. I, I know my local club, the Palmetto Curling Club, Club here in Greenville, South Carolina. We've already had you know a couple open houses, learn to curls, but it's really trying to you know save ice time during the two weeks of the Olympics because I, I know talking to the guys at the Granite Curling Club in Seattle last year, their line was out the door wrapped around the building during the Olympics with people just wanting to get in and try it. Right. And so that's a huge opportunity. And maybe you charge a couple, you know, a couple bucks or whatever to um, raise money for the club and then other ideas on top of the op- open houses and learn to curls. You can also throw those private parties and corporate event rentals. But this is the time for the clubs to really get involved in their communities and reach out um, to those around them to get more people interested in the sport and get them through the doors. So and other like other ideas would be setting up a social media platform, maybe reaching out to the juniors in the club and having them post things on Snapchat and Instagram, um, just about how much fun they're having down at the curling club those are all good ideas that will get people talking about the sport and getting them um, familiar with the club in the area yeah and one of the ways I've, I've 
was talking with my local club is, you know, trying to kind of localize the Olympics because, you know, when they're looking for local stories, whether it's, you know, an athlete directly competing in the games, there's ways that they try and bring that home, the local media. And that might be just simply a local club reaching out to your local TV stations or your local newspaper, maybe setting up a, a media, you know, learn to curl that night or, or a day or, you know, just, you know, trying to get, you know, a report order out to come say hey look we do have a curling club here have you ever seen this here check us out and here's what we do here's what we're all about you know some of that earned media exposure can really go a long way right exactly all right and so Uh, you know when you look at some of the other things you know some of the other ideas because you you Mm -hmm. mentioned um corporate outings because is you have ways to get corporations and businesses as a group to get out of the office, whether it be, you know, a, a, a team bonding aspect, whether it be just to go have some fun, you know, that's not just a way they can go and do it and, and, and slide and, and learn to curl, but that's a way that clubs can really use it, the exposure of the Olympics and bringing businesses in to really kind of help, I don't want to say the pocketbook, to, you know, but to bring in some corporate dollars, whether it be sponsorships maybe down the road, but certainly the immediacy of getting a group onto your ice. Right. And you just have, you just offer hosting team building activities. You have a couple of instructors, either, you know, volunteer instructors there to help out. And um, we at one of the clubs here, we teach them how, instead of teaching them how to slide right away, we just teach them how to do the fun stone, walk out and throw the rock. And that seems to be a good enough experience for those big corporate events. Um, they have a great time and then they stick around and have food and drinks. And that's all great for the club. Yeah, when you can socialize, have some drinks, and have some fun, look, <laughs> sign, yeah. sign anybody up, right, Jess? But, right. You know, what about, uh, in, in one of the obvious things that you can do is, and this is a little bit more, I don't want to say, it's not inside baseball, but really once you become a part of the club, because you really want that exposure to, to seeing what curling is, to trying it, because you you want to try it and you want to get people hooked, but but clearly another way that can be done, you know, you can have some fun and and, and grow your club and some exposure is is watch parties. You know, I want to say have a watch party and watch the Twelfth in Sports Network as we'll be broadcasting. You know, the round robin and stuff. Uh, you know, at the trials here in in Omaha in just a couple of weeks, but certainly for the playoffs on NBC Sports Net. Uh, but mm-hmm. without a doubt, you know, the obviously the two weeks of the Olympics in curling. And let's not get let's not get ahead of ourselves because we obviously have the men's and women's, but we also have mixed doubles. So curling is going to be a full two weeks in this coming upcoming Olympics in South Korea. Watch parties are always a fun way just to get people together, especially when the U.S. is playing. Yeah, that's a great idea. I think it's um, perfect for, you know, like you said, just watch parties, getting people involved with it, coming down to check it out. And then maybe at the beginning, you do a five to 10 minute intro about the sport and maybe what they're trying to do and some of the objectives of the game, just so they can better understand it going into it. What about the way to get kids involved? Because I know USA Curling is, has got some really not just ideas, but they've been doing some things with youth programs and trying to get into classes and, and get into community centers and, and youth centers, youth events, local schools, just to try and introduce the sport to young kids to try and draw them into the game you know curling in the gym kids curl um you know what are some different things the ways to attract kids I think, like you said, the USA Curling staff has been doing fantastic at trying to help promote um, curling to the youth. And so it's definitely something you want to take advantage of as a club. Um, like you said, curling in the gym uh, is pretty awesome. They, you can, especially for you gym teachers, the USA Curling loans Rolling Stones to um, the gym or to the school so that you can have it in the gymnasium as, as part of your gym class. Uh, another option is uh, they have the classroom materials. So you can actually teach curling um, with classroom discussion prompts, word finds, crossword puzzles, and instructions for um, a curling classroom beanbag game, apparently. So, um, and then in addition, you were talking about the kids curl program that they have designed, and that also includes lesson plans, kid-friendly workbooks, teaching aids, penguin pins, and patches. So, I mean, the USCA has put together fantastic um, materials to help with grow the sport in, in the schools. 
Yeah, and, the, and, and you mentioned USA Curling. I mean, this, this is something that is your member, you know, very directly involved is, is what a you're, – you're on the board, right? I mean, you're one of the board members for USA Curling. Correct. I'm a director on the board, yeah. Yep. So, I mean, the, this is something that USA Curling – and you can speak to this, cause, and I really want you to talk about this because, I mean, this obviously isn't something that USA Curling just starts planning for in the year. This is something that – when I say this, this is something, but the the winter games, this is something that takes a full four years to prepare for. And when I say that, too, this preparing is something that goes on through a full four-year cycle because not to say that Terry and Rick and everybody and Jenny and the USA Curling office in Stevens Point are overwhelmed, but just the interest and the surge in the game each Olympic year, I mean, this is something that they plan – Kim and everybody there that they are working hard for to maximize just going back not months but years yeah I mean these guys have been working their butts off to to help the clubs and help get everybody ready for this platform for this you know for this Olympic push so um, they they have been spending hours and hours trying to help clubs and help build programs and try to get people get the clubs the best um materials possible to help grow the sport so it's been great to see kim's hard work and it's coming to fruition here and i think another thing that um, would be good for clubs to know is that there will be club focused commercials that will be airing um so there'll be outright outreach efforts with nbc sports and um yeah with nbc sports so that will be detailing clubs in the area uh, for those commercials, so it'll be tailored to the clubs. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, and a great segue because you know, as, as you're talking about that, I mean, perfect setup because right now, Curling Night in America, we just had episode three air this past week. Uh, mm-hmm. You've got a lot of things right now, Jess. It can really grease the skids, and I'm talking greasing the skids starting in October. And, and what do we? I mean, help me. I've got SEC math. Haven't gone to school at the University of Kentucky, <laughs> but what four months to really grease the skids up until February with curling night in america that started you've got the olympic trials coming up you got the mixed doubles olympic trials in december oh there are a whole lot of things right now that can really entice i mean this is things that right. the clubs can start right now mm-hmm. oh definitely i wouldn't wait i wouldn't wait a second just get on it and the more people talk about it the more growth you're going to have and more people are going to be involved in it yeah and another one thing i want to mention too is is an olympic day you know it is something where you know events can be arranged by usa curling with an olympic day toolkit designed by the usoc um, whether it be a i don't think a current olympian because these guys getting ready to compete but c- certainly past olympians people like yourself jess you know competed mm-hmm. in two Olympic Games, you know, bringing in an an Olympian, whether it be before the Olympics, whether it be during, that's another way to maximize exposure, get new members to come in and say, look, we got an Olympian here in our club, but also the media component as well. Right. Well, and uh, this is the the Olympic Day is actually through the Olympic Committee. So it's a pretty cool thing that they do. throughout the country. And it's usually during the month of June, um, June 23rd, I believe is the actual Olympic day. And so, like you said, the Olympians can come out and they can pretty much do promote anything that you want them to, <laughs> to work for. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a great event. I've helped with a curling Olympic day before, and it, it's a lot of fun and gets people more you know, gets people out on the ice. Yeah, just a great way to, again, maximize exposure. And I know people like yourself just love, I mean, it's all about growing the game and, you know, mm-hmm. seeing curling just, just in places here in, in you know, the, the dirty south is sometimes we like to refer <laughs> to it, but in non-traditional areas like here in South Carolina, like in Florida, in, you know, places that you just would not think that would have dedicated ice, you know, our curling club, the Palmetto Curling Club, is undergoing a, you know, trying to raise money right now for dedicated ice. But while mm-hmm. we're trying to raise it, there's other clubs right now that you would just not expect, like up the road in Charlotte. They've got dedicated ice. Where would you ever think that in the state of North Carolina? <laughs> right. Well, and I think uh, I think there's designated ice out in California now, too. So yep. it's all over. I mean, there's 48 states that has curling. So look it up. You know, be sure to check out your area. There could be one right down the street from you. 
Well, Jess, this has been awesome. I, I just we can't thank you enough. Uh, I don't want to say subbing because that would be a lack of total disrespect on on your part to say you're subbing for Joe. You you have taken us to a new level <laughs> a, a co-hosting tonight. Just I doubt. Sh- 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 don't tell Mr. Calabrese that he will get oh so ticked <laughs> off at me, Jessica Schultz. But he has pretty big shoes to fill. He, he does. I mean, he's <laughs> he he's involved in some other things. He's taking some right. classes right now. He's obviously he and BA getting all of our equipment ready. And I and I'd be remiss if I did not say that. You know, it was just made official recently. It's the one of the worst kept secrets that. Uh, the Twelfth and Sports Network. We will be in Omaha, uh, broadcasting mm-hmm. the round robin. Uh, it, is, it was basically eyes dotted, T's crossed. So we will be there. We will have all the round robin, robin coverage starting Saturday. Uh, that would be November the eleventh. I'll be over the, across the street at Winterfest for a couple hours, but we will start broadcasting the round robin there on Saturday, November the eleventh, and we will carry that through until I believe Thursday morning. November the 16th if there is a tiebreaker needed on the men's or women's side before NBC takes over but yes you will be able to get every single game don't worry we will be in the house Jessica it should be a lot of fun and you will also be in the house and I expect to see you in the booth with us all right, Jess, well, it, we'll definitely see you in the booth, I'm sure, but at some point, uh, booth, interviews, you're going to be with us hanging out, 12th in Sports Network in Omaha. Can't wait to do this at the Olympic Trials. But in the meantime, we talked about it earlier, just go ahead and tell everybody your brand new Facebook page, your new blog, tell everybody where they can sign up, like, find, and everything, all Jessica Schultz, all day, all the time. <laughs> All right. Well, I just started a Facebook page last week. It's Jessica K. Schultz. You can look that up. Um, it's going to be kind of merging my two passions with the health and fitness and therapy and rehab and curling. So um, check it out. See if you like it. See if it's your vibe. Um, in addition, I also started a blog. I just released that today. And it's just going to be uh, kind of uh, based on the Olympic trials and the team. And I'm hoping to get some exclusive interviews with a couple of the athletes leading into the trials and maybe even rolling it over into the Olympics. So feel free, check it out, like it up. Um, Let me know if you have any suggestions or comments. And then you can also follow along at Jess underscore curls on Twitter if you're interested. And if you need some more Jessica Schultz in your life, go ahead and check out (laughs) Athletes Originals. Jessica, if she doesn't have one thing going on, she's got 50. Check out her Rock Life line there on Athletes Original. It's awesome. I have multiple T-shirts in my drawer downstairs. I'm actually in a one-in, one-out policy now because my (laughs) wife says no more T-shirts price. you got to start getting rid of some, but those that I've got from Rock Life, those are not going anywhere. Those are some of my favorite designs. <laughs> Jess, tell everybody where they can find your stuff there. Thanks, Bryce. If you go to athleteoriginals.com, um, check out, just look it up by my name or by Rock Life. You can see I have, like Price said, I have lots of T-shirts, hoodies. Um, we have onesies for the babies. We also have cell phone covers, bags, hats, you name it. We got it. Check it out. <laughs> Christmas gifts, folks. You heard it right there. She gave you an infomercial. Exactly. Christmas is around the corner. I smell there rock life. Athletes original for Jessica K. Schultz. All right, Jess, look, let's go ahead and get out of here. Just again, thank you so much for taking the time today. Just uh, the extra extra and podcast. Just, this is just awesome. It's always a treat to have you. Just a lot of fun with you, Jess. Thanks, Price. It's been great being right. with you again. <laughs> it's awesome. Thank you so much. All right, when we come back, we'll put a bow on this thing. Episode 8 of the Extra Extra and Podcast with the 12th In Sports Network, powered by Isa Jennings. All right, that'll do it for Episode 8 of the Extra Extra and Podcast with the 12th In Sports Network, powered by Isagenics. Another great episode here today. Had a lot of fun. Appreciate Jessica Schultz joining me for our weekly roundtable there in that last segment. Always have a lot of fun with one of our favorite former Olympians, Jessica Schultz. Just appreciate her time this week on a busy week as we inch ever so closer to the Olympic trials. Now just weeks away in Omaha, Nebraska. And also big shout out and thank you to Nina Roth and Eileen Gebbing fresh off their win in the Canadiens Women's Classic. Appreciate them uh, joining us after they defeated Anna Hasselberg. So a great win for Team Roth and company as they now move into the 10th place, actually, uh, in the World Curling Rankings. 
heading into this weekend's slam. So just really appreciate Eileen and Nina joining us this week. we got a lot more coming up next week. Don't forget, a new episode every single Thursday morning available on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, just various many, many ways you can't miss us to listen to the Extra Extra In podcast. Just go to Apple Podcasts on your smartphone, search the Extra Extra In, boom, you'll get it right there. Just hit subscribe and you'll get a notification for every single new episode which comes out on Thursdays. And certainly, without a doubt, check out tesn.us forward slash podcast. You can listen also right there. And also register with the widget for our weekly contest giveaways. Just great prizes we've had all single year. And just got a lot more coming up this season as we got a whole lot more curling to go. But next week, we will talk more curling. That would be with John Schuster and Tyler George from Team Schuster as we barrel toward those Olympic trials. I will be in New York City next week for Team USA's Winterfest 100 Days Out event presented by Hershey's in Times Square. John Schuster, Jamie Sinclair, and Taylor and Sarah Anderson scheduled to be in New York City doing a lot of media. So we've got a street curling demonstration. If you're listening anywhere in the New York City area, come out and see us on Wednesday. We're going to be down in Times Square most all afternoon. Really things get going at 3 o'clock and will run till 8 p.m. I believe from 7 to 8 p.m. The Olympic Channel will broadcast the final hour and a lot of things going on with news, interviews, things that we've done all day long. But stop by and see us. Come by and say hello as I will be over with the curling folks announcing and emceeing the street curling portion of the Winterfest. Can't wait for that, but we'll bring you some sights and sounds and news from that event next week right here on the Extra Extra End Podcast for Price Atkinson. This has been the Extra Extra End Podcast with the 12th in Sports Network powered by Isogenics. We'll see you again next week. Thanks for being with us on this edition of the Extra Extra In Podcast with Price Atkinson. Follow Price and the 12th In Sports Network crew on Twitter and Facebook to stay up on our weekly contests, giveaways, and guests for upcoming episodes of the Extra Extra In Podcast, powered by Isogenics.